Alright, I am back with another video, and today we are doing the next in my deity build lineup, Yondala. Uh, Yondala is basically the god of all halflings, basically the one that all of them look up to, and is all about, you know, half home and nature, protecting halflings, and doing what is right. Um, basically, a very, very good aligned deity is in cahoots with a lot of other good aligned deities and spurns the evil ones. And it's basically just, as I kind of described, all about everything that halflings are about. So, you know, being like merry and jovial, eating well, playing well, sleeping well, all of that sort of thing. And as such, me and the community, because if you didn't know, these deity builds are made with help from the community over on my livestream, kind of decided to make Yondal, like this kind of chosen of Yondala, based around food and just taking care of others and such like that, since Yondala's, I guess, kind of logo is literally a cornucopia filled with food. And then, of course, that kind of turned into a discussion about, well, okay, who loves to kind of help others and, you know, make sure they're fed? And we kind of have this old grandma halfling turned um, into a professional chef. So this whole build is going to have kind of a food vibe to it overall. And as such, let's get into it. All right, so starting off at level one, actually, actually starting as a cleric makes the most sense to us. Now, Yondala's domain is actually life, which fits perfectly into everything we're trying to do. So yes, at the end of the day, this is going to be a bit of a standard healing build. It's kind of what I'm focusing on, but with some unique twists here and there to kind of fit the theme that we're going for. Also, this build is going to have a focus on actually using the alchemy system, hence a proficiency we're going to get later. So throughout your game, you're going to want to pick up ingredients to be able to cook your food, in quotations, as you progress so kind of a little side quest to stay in character but we are going to get plenty of food related abilities just from our leveling and our equipment as we go but starting off as a cleric we are going to be choosing life domain as our subclass because obviously that makes sense giving us heavy armor which i will go over later but i don't want to use heavy armor with this build because i kind of like the vibe that we're going for here but it is an option and it's probably the better one actually for combat but as you'll see this build just does does just fine without it. So as a life domain cleric we're going to be getting things like cure wounds and bless added to our spell list for free and cure wounds we already want but bless is also perfect because what else like because you have a grandma right and she goes oh bless you dear oh don't worry you can do whatever you set your mind to and then everyone in the party gets a 1d4 bonus to their attack rolls and saving throws because of encouraging words from their grandmother <laughs> we also gain subclass features such as disciple of life allowing us to whenever we heal a target they gain an additional hit points equal to two plus the spells level basically meaning that we are going to be able to give out much better heals. Uh, that's the worst possible way I could have uh, could have said that, but hey ho. Basically, our food is very, very good. As for our cantrips, I've gone for resistance and guidance, as those are kind of two really nice cantrips to have. But you can swap resistance out for formaturgy if you want. And as well, I've also gone for produce flame, allowing us to create a flame that is harmless to us in our hand, meaning that we can cook from anywhere because you need heat to cook. And this uh, cantrip means that we can always cook always. It also allows us to throw that same flame, dealing a bit of fire damage to our foes, but come on, we're not going to use it for that. We're going to use it for cooking. Our deity, of course, is Yondala. As the mother of the halfling pantheon, Yondala is known for her kindness and open mind, encouraging her followers to protect the home, hearth, and nature, as I said, perfect for a build like this. And finally, our ability scores, Dexterity and Wisdom as at 16, Dexterity mainly for AC, but it will help with our weapon attacks a bit later, as well as Wisdom for our spellcasting, which is going to be our primary stat that we're going to be focusing on for this build. Constitution is at 14, again, you can have this a bit higher if you like, you can swap the Dexterity and Constitution around, this build is actually a bit more freeform in that regard, but with the amount of healing that we're going to do, I'm not too worried about having lower HP. But I guess if you want more, better, if you want better concentration saving throws, and constitution could also work. But you know, you choose when you make this build. Intelligence and charisma both at ten. I feel like this character could be both smart and charismatic. So feel free to put one at eight and one at twelve, or have them both at ten, like I do here. It doesn't really matter, but I feel like it may, either way would make sense. It, these are just our dumb stats anyway. And as for our skill proficiencies, I've gone for the uh, guild artisan background because being a guild artisan is specifically about honing a craft that people recognize you for and. As such you get connections based on that and you gain inspiration for kind of honing that craft even further so 
I feel like having cooking be our craft makes perfect sense. So we have insight and persuasion from that. Persuasion, yep, makes perfect sense. And insight is also great because you can't lie to your granny. You just can't lie to her. You just can't. Religion and medicine as our chosen proficiencies from cleric. Religion makes perfect sense, because again, we're a cleric of the Yondala, makes sense. And medicine kind of being reflavored into the cooking skill, because you need the medicine skill for alchemy, makes perfect sense. So we get everything we want pretty much right at level one, which is brilliant. Right, next up at level two, you can take this little multi-class dip whenever you want, but I'm just gonna show it off right at the start, because it makes sense. We're gonna pick up a level of druid. Yondala kind of has a nature vibe about her, so it works, and I feel like this old granny would absolutely tend her own garden, where she grows her own ingredients, so in my opinion it makes sense to take this dip of druid, but we are going to get a couple of useful things from it. Namely, we're going to be able to pick up resistance as well, since we didn't pick it, since I kind of swapped it out for Thaumaturgy at the last minute, so we can pick that up here as well, as well as grabbing Shillelagh. Shillelagh is going to allow us to take a staff or club and make it magical. Uh, it's going to deal extra damage, and it's also going to use our wisdom for the attack rolls as well. So that means for us, our our uh, weapon of choice, which I'll get into later, is actually going to work on this build, which is more of a comical effect, but hey, we, we still want Shillelagh on this build, so it's an option. And as for our spells, we are going to get four of them at level one, and there's a few that I want to grab. A good berry is the re main reason we're here, though, so now we can always produce actual food that heals our allies and can be used as camp supplies, which... I couldn't not include it in this build. I mean, come on, it's one of the only spells in the game that actually creates food. There's two, and this is one of them, so I absolutely had to include it. So 100% grab good berry. It's really gonna help you across your whole playthrough as well, being both a healing option and a camp supply option, which especially if you're playing in honor or tactician mode, having consistent access to camp supplies is seriously good. So good berry, absolutely. And otherwise we could just pick up some utility spells like long strider, enhance sleep and speak with animals to round out this little one level dip. And with that finished, we're going to be jumping straight back over to cleric because at level two, we're going to be getting our channel divinity as well as turn undead and our Channel Divinity Action, Preserve Life, allowing us to have a healing aura that always does a flat amount. By the time this build is finished, this is going to be 36 flat healing, guaranteed, no rolls required, which is perfect. That doesn't, that also doesn't take our spell slots. It uses our Channel Divinity charges, which we're going to have quite a few of, so this is going to be a very consistent way of healing for us. We also do get to prepare some spells, uh, and obviously there's a couple of choices I want to go for. Sanctuary is the most important. Again, we are a healer build, and we don't want to take damage ourselves if we can help it we don't really want to be the focus of combat so we can focus on healing and since sanctuary only breaks if you're hostile to someone else you could basically be invincible while you keep healing the party which is going to be great again for those later uh those higher level difficulties i also want create or destroy water in addition to fire you are you do need water to cook a lot of things that cat just picked the worst place to try sleeping in because now it's bubbles are filling my screen I love filming on location. Anyways, so create or destroy water makes absolute perfect sense for this build. And it's also great if you accidentally happen to start a fire with your cooking. So perfect, great, create or destroy water makes sense. Uh, next up, we want healing word. Again, now we have a kind of bonus action ranged healing spell, perfect for us. And I'm also gonna be picking up command because again, you have to listen to granny. And if you do anything she doesn't like in her kitchen, like maybe trying to cook, she will force you to flee. <laughs> So, Command makes absolute sense, and we're also going to be picking up Shield of Faith here. Next up, at Cleric Level 3, we get access to Level 2 spells, meaning that we're going to have Aid and Lesser Restoration added to our um, spell list without need taking up our prepared slots, which is great. Aid I was going to select anyway, because it's a great way to increase our maximum hit points, so we absolutely want that. And Lesser Restoration makes perfect sense for this build, and I would have taken it anyway, because again, Granny's cooking can cure all. Uh, as for our spells, we do get access to level 2 ones at this point. I want protection from poison. Now, I have gone for a strong heart halfling, as you can see here, so we already are resistant to being poisoned and poison damage. 
um, because I figured it made sense that this person has been cooking for so long, they probably have built up a little bit of resistance to poison. Not every meal has exactly gone perfectly in their career. But that doesn't matter. She is not just about taking care of herself, she is about taking care of others, and as such, protection from poison to make her allies immune to poison as well, meaning that they can eat absolutely anything, is perfect. Not that Granny's cooking is bad, but you know, when you're working on the road and you have to use whatever ingredients you can find, it might help to have it. Also, calm emotions, because Granny can just calm anybody, making it so they can't be charmed, frightened, or become enraged. This is a completely useless spell that's just here for flavor, pick anything else. <laughs> At level 4, we are going to be able to choose our first feat, or I guess level 5, technically, but again, you can take that multi-class dip whenever. We also gain another cantrip at this point, and I will pick up uh, pretty, uh, Sacred Flame. Uh, we are going to get another spell as well, and I will go with Prayer of Healing. And finally, we do get to choose our feat, and I'm just going to go for an Ability Score Improvement and bump up that Wisdom to 18. Next up, at Cleric Level 5, we're going to have access to Level 3 spells, as well as Destroy Undead, allowing us to whenever we turn an undead creature, they also take a big dollop of Radiant Damage. We also now also gain a couple of life domain spells, one being Revivify, allowing us to revive a companion, returning to life with one hit point. Great, would have picked that up anyway. As well as Beacon of Hope, which I'm so happy that we get for free. Your allies will always regain the maximum amount of hit points possible when healed. Perfect, it's literally adding some flavour to our cooking, some extra spices that make it absolute perfection so they get the maximum amount of healing. We also gain advantage on wisdom and death saving throws, which is perfect. This requires a concentration, but since we're a less offensive build, what else are we going to be concentrating on? This is going to make our healing as effective as possible and is my primary concentration spell of choice for this build. And also we are going to gain access to some other spells, so I'm going to quickly pick up... I mean... Mass Healing Word makes the most sense to pick up in a situation like this. I'm also going to pick up Glyph of Warding, because specifically Glyph of Warding has a trap that allows you to put enemies to sleep. And I don't know why, but that felt right for a grandmother, to be able to put people to sleep. Just very soothing, caring, feeling at peace, you fall asleep. I don't know. Pick anything else if you want, but that's what I'm going with. Next up, at Cleric Level 6, we're going to gain another Channel Divinity Charge, which is perfect. That means two uses of Preserve Life. And we also gain Blessed Healer, allowing us to, whenever we heal others, we also regain hit points equal to two plus the spells level. So we're always keeping our own HP topped up. As well as getting to pick another spell at this level. And yes, I'm grabbing Spirit Guardians, because of course we, we would. Why wouldn't we grab spirit guardians but i'd also recommend picking up remove curse as well allowing you to use your cooking to heal even the worst possible afflictions that being curses or hexes next up at total at total level eight we are going to be a level seven cleric giving us level four spells we gain death ward and guardian of faith added to our um spell list for free. Death Ward basically meaning that we can protect a creature from death. The next time it will be reduced to zero hit points, it remains conscious with one hit point left. Grant just a little bit of extra protection. That is the uh, Werther's Originals that Granny slipped into your pocket at the last second, which when you go down, you quickly pop it in your mouth, and then you come back up with one HP. <laughs> and then finally, Guardian of Faith. Uh, she summons her grandson, the Holy Spirit of her grandson, to come and fight you. Um, or protect her, at least. Uh, we also do gain access to level 4 spells at this point, and there is actually a couple I would like to pick up. Freedom of Movement is a great buffing spell that lasts for until you take a long rest, that prevents uh, yourself or allies from being stunned, difficult terrain cannot slow you down, and you cannot be magically paralyzed or restrained. Uh, as well as, I want to pick up Banishment. This is Granny putting you in timeout, telling you she's not mad, she's just disappointed. So you get put in timeout, which in this case is literally being banished to another dimension temporarily. So yeah. And next up at Cleric Level 8, we are going to be getting Divine Strike Radiant, meaning that our weapon attacks, in addition to our Shillelagh damage, will also deal an extra D8 of Radiant damage. We're literally smacking them with... Holy cooking power. <laughs> I don't know at this point, man. Uh, this is just fun. 
Uh, we also do gain another spell at this level, and I'm going to pick up that Remove Curse that I talked about earlier, as well as an Ability Score Improvement to max out our Wisdom. And finally, at Cleric level 9, we are, well not finally, we still have a few levels to go, I don't know why I said finally, we are going to get access to level 5 spells, including two that I would have added anyway, but we get for free with Life Domain. Mass Cure Wounds is a big healing spell, and Greater Restoration can allow our cooking to cure even more ailments. In fact, I'm pretty sure with the combined amount of spells that we have, there's nothing that a good pasta bowl can't cure. As well as we now have access to big, big spells, uh, including Flame Strike, cooling down a pillar of fire and radiant damage from the heavens above to smite down our foes. That fire damage is the spice of our cooking. Or something. I don't know. Flame Strike is just one of those really fun spells. It's one of my favorite spells in the game that I rarely ever get because it's only available on, like, Light Cleric and I'm pretty sure Fiend Warlock. Correct me if I'm wrong about that, but it doesn't come up very often. And finally, um, ah, we'll just go with Guiding Bolt. I think it's about time we picked up a decent range damage option <laughs> at level 10, 11. And our final level is... No, it's not our final level. I keep getting ahead of myself. At level 10 of Cleric, we are going to get Divine Intervention, which means that we can use a once per character special effect, and I'll get more into those later. We also do gain another cantrip. Uh, we'll grab Blade Ward. And we also do gain another spell at this point. In fact, the game chose Speak with Dead, and I'm kind of happy with that. Yeah, we'll just go with that. And finally, at Cleric level 11, and finally for real this time, we get access to level 6 spells. And this is the main reason I wanted to go this far in Cleric. We are picking up Heroes Feast. This spell does a lot of things. You and everyone else around you can't be poisoned, diseased, or frightened. Our base HP increases and that can stack with aid for a massive buff, as well as giving us, if, us and all of our allies advantage on wisdom saves. Now, the spell description doesn't say this, but it also summons a massive basket filled with a bountiful feast of food. Granny's cooking skills have now reached the limit, and she can now make incredible meals that invigorate everyone around her. We can also pick up the level 6 spell Heal. Now, obviously, we only get one level 6 spell slot in Baldur's Gate 3, but if you have something like the Spell Crux Amulet to restore that level 6 spell slot, you could cast this at the start of the day, getting all those benefits, use the Spell Crux Amulet, swap it out for the amulet I actually have on this build, and then you have access to that level 6 slot for whatever you want. Maybe Heal for that flat 70 healing that also removes blindness, blindness and any diseases. Again, the ultimate meal. Everything we have here is perfect for what I want for this build. And that is the build. Overall, you're going to be getting a ton out of this. Again, it's a pretty standard healing build, but between Good Berry, Alchemy, Heroes Feast, and other things, you're going to be able to make enough food to keep the whole of Faerun full. Uh, also, you, again, are just a pretty effective healer. All of the healing spells, revival spells, ways to protect yourself, ways to protect your allies, but you also have things that can deal big damage, like Flame Strike, Spirit Guardians, Glyph of Warding, all of that sort of thing, as well as your weapons that will allow you to you know, do the damage. I will quickly, before I forget, go over Divine Intervention as well. Divine Intervention, again, is a once per character thing, but you can gain a few benefits from it. The first one is uh, Sunder the Hereticals, just dealing a bunch of radiant damage. Personally, I wouldn't use this one. The two that I would kind of focus on is Opulent Revival, which basically makes the whole party have a long rest, reviving them from death as well, which can be really useful in a clutch situation. Golden Generosity, which is the main one I would probably do, allowing you to call upon Yondala herself to provide you with a rich bounty of potions and camp supplies. Even more food. But then the final one that I could also see being considered is Arm Thy Servant, giving you a legendary plus three weapon that has a healing aura to it. So it's up to you, but Divine Vention, no matter what you choose, is going to help out, or just be very flavorful at the least. So let's get into the equipment. Let me just adjust the camera so we get Granny in the shot. There we go. So, oh, I forgot to re-equip my ring. There we go. So, <laughs> again, this is kind of a joke build, more meant for roleplay rather than anything else. So, 
I mean, while this build is extremely effective, the equipment isn't exactly optimal, it's more flavorful, but there's still some ways here to kind of make it more combat orientated if you so choose, and I'll go over that in a minute. First off, our hat is the Rufflesome Blaggart hat. Literally no effect to it, no mechanical benefit whatsoever, other than being a hat that using the the Urge die from the Boring Die Pack mod, I could turn white. The, unfortunately, this hat was a little bit bugged. Whenever I use base game dies on it, it just didn't work for some reason. So unfortunately, uh, this hat will normally come in red, so maybe if you don't care about going for the chef look so much, and obviously you don't have access to mods, uh, you might want to just go for maybe more of a standard grandma look instead, maybe something from camp clothing while you equip the other armors here. I don't know. So this is kind of like the option I would go for if you want something close to a chef's hat, but otherwise, you know, throw whatever you like on this build. Uh, our apron is the obsidian laced robe. On a successful saving throw against a throw's spell, deal 5 to 8 fire damage to them, basically hellish rebuke in an armor, as well as giving us resistance to fire damage. Again, a literal cooking apron, protecting us from the heat and any spillages of food. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it all white, no matter what dyes I used, this orange always stayed, but you know what, it's fine, it works. This is our apron of choice, giving us that fire resistance, makes sense. But if you want an actual piece of heavy armor, since we can use it, the Dwarven Split Mail will work for us, giving you a plus two to your constitution, uh, plus you take one less piercing damage, as well as a plus one bonus to strength saves and checks. So if you want something a bit more combat focused, you can go for that. But personally, I do prefer wearing the Obsidian Laced Robe. Now, Elephant in the Room. We are basically wearing clothing without any form of unarmored defense. But the very simple solution to that is just to have Gale cast Mage Armor on this character at the start of the day. He doesn't even have to stay in the party, he just has to quickly cast it on you, then you can put him back in camp, and you will keep Mage Armor, buffing your AC to about a 17 when all is said and done. Still not great, but better than 14, but of course you can always wear heavy armor if you like. Next up, our gloves, the Hell Rider's Pride. Whenever you heal another creature, it gains Blade Ward, basically resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage dealt by weapon attacks. Uh, since we're going to be healing people just basically all the time anyway, this means we're basically going to give our allies constant barbarian resistance, which is pretty cool. But if you decide you don't care about the clothing thing, because this counts as clothing for some reason, even though they're metal gauntlets, um... And if you're going for the heavy armor route anyway, you can swap it out in Act 3 for the Reviving Hands, which is just a straight up upgrade. It does the exact same thing whenever you heal a creature, it gives them Blade Ward, but when you revive a creature, it also gives them Death Ward, meaning that the next time they would go down again after that, uh, they would get back up with 1 HP. And it also gives you a usage of Revivify for free. So, Overall, if you're going the heavy armor route, you can upgrade your uh, armor as you go. And next up, I've got the Bone Spike Boots, giving us a plus one bonus to armor class and saving throws, as long as we are not wearing armor or holding a shield. With the apron, we're not, but with the heavy armor, obviously, switch this to something else. Namely, either the evasive shoes to still get that plus one to armor class, or the boots of striding to allow you to gain a bit of momentum whenever you start concentrating, and also making it so you cannot be knocked prone while concentrating, meaning that you, that concentration will not be broken. Uh, if you're focusing on Beacon of Hope, this will work, and this is just kind of an Act 1 option that will work for you, but I would probably stick to the Evasive Shoes or the Bone Spike Shoes, personally. Uh, as for our uh, accessories here, we have the Amulet of the Devout, giving us a plus 2 bonus to our spell save DC, which is quite nice, as well as giving us an additional use of Channel Divinity once per long rest. So we gain 3 Channel Divinities per long rest. And Channel Divinity also recovers on a short rest as well, so you're just going to have a lot of Channel Divinity. Next up, we have the Whispering Promise, which is a standard healing um, kind of ring. Whenever we heal a creature, it gains Bless. So not only are we giving everyone we heal resistance, we're also giving them Bless as well, which is great. And the final choice here is a bit of an odd one. I've gone for the Ring of Blink, kind of just kind of to get into that kind of halfling trickery thing. Basically, this will allow you to cast Blink, uh, which allows you to, at the end of each of your turns, on a, you can roll a d20, and on an 11 or higher, you vanish into the ethereal plane where you cannot be harmed. This will break concentration unfortunately so you can't have this and beacon hope up at the same time but i thought it was just another interesting way to be able to kind of uh you know keep yourself safe while healing others maybe not so useful in sanctuary as a thing but this would also allow you to take hostile actions as well without breaking the blink so you can be basically be healing and attacking while also being able to keep yourself out of danger so i quite like blink here
Now, for some reason, my weapon of choice has disappeared out of my inventory. I don't know why. I had it on me. Perhaps one of the cats nicked it. So, I will point out that I've got the cleaver here, but it's kind of useless for this build, unfortunately, since we don't have strength. But let me get our actual weapon of choice in just a second. And here we are. You all saw it coming. The weapon of choice for us is the salami. It counts as camp supplies, so you can use it for cooking, but it is also a weapon. Now, normally this is a considered a club, but does 1d4 damage minus 1 because we are lacking strength. But with a quick casting of that shillelagh spell we grabbed earlier, it now does 1d8 plus 5 damage. So overall, a big change for us, allowing us to use this offensively. And remember, this works with Divine Strike Radiant, meaning that we can actually do a decent chunk of damage with this sausage. So personally, I think it's perfect for this build. I would have loved to have used the cleaver, but unfortunately, I mean, I would have dual wielded because salami is considered a light weapon, but the cleaver, for some reason, isn't, despite every other weapon in its class, that being hand axe is considered light. So, I don't know. And unfortunately, dual wielding doesn't really work for this build because you can't have shillelagh on both of your weapons. So, uh, you could well use a shield with this build. In fact, that's probably recommended. But it's entirely up to you. And yeah, that is the build. Overall, you're going to be getting a ton uh, out of it. I'm just going to. You're going to hear some weird audio because I'll be showing the comment finish one just moving outside so there's less overall noise. There we go. So with that, you're going to get, you, with this build, you're pretty much just getting the standard healer affair and you're a very effective one at that. But it comes with awesome flavor, some funny little quirks, and again, making proper use of the alchemy system. This is more of a roleplay build than anything, but also just kind of something that we came up with for fun. And I just personally really, really enjoy it. Uh, I feel like this is this would actually be a build that I would want to have in my party on a tougher playthrough, just making it so we are much harder to take down with the boost to HP by stacking Curious Feast and Aid, the buffs that we get from things like Death Ward, Freedom of Movement, all that good stuff, uh, you know, uh, and also being quite offensively capable with things like Flame Strike and Divine Intervention being a clutch thing to use in the necessary situation, especially on an honor mode run where it could save everything, you know what I mean? So honestly, this is a build that I would actually use to its full effect. And again, just having all the general buffing stuff like Speak of Animals, uh, in a, like Long Strider, all that sort of thing. I, I just love this build. I love the flavor. I love the like the kind of fun, jokey aspect to it. I love the uh, the role play that can, can come from this. This character would be eternal rivals with Auntie Ethel. I feel like because Auntie Ethel kind of steps on the sweet old lady archetype by making it sinister. So you know she's got a gun for her. You know stuff like that. I feel like this whole thing is just extremely fun, and I'm really and me and the others in the community were so excited when we when we came up with it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that is everything. Uh, as far as channel update stuff, uh, this video will be going up later today. Again, I'm recording this the morning of because I'm lazy at the moment and I'm procrastinating things. Uh, as for the um, kind of channel as a whole, uh, I mean, obviously on Wednesday, I uploaded my first ever Elven Ring build and I'll be honest, didn't go well. Uh, one, my worst performing video in a very, very long time. Uh, even worse than what I would consider my previous worst performing videos of all time. And I understand that, that a lot of people aren't going to be, like, really interested in stuff like that at the moment. And unfortunately, when, you know, when your subscribers don't click on a video, uh, it doesn't really get promoted anymore. So I'll have to kind of see if I can get away around that. Maybe I'll take Elden Ring videos back for a bit just until I am, um, just until the channel's in a bit of a better state. Because it is kind of on the decline at the moment, but I'm working on it. Uh, nothing to worry about. And I'm still working on that massive video project that I'm working on, uh, that I've been working on for a little while now. Um, it's... I don't know how many more days of editing it's going to be. I imagine it will probably come out in a week or two, depending on how much time I'm going to have for editing. Uh, and hopefully that one goes down well, because it is one of the hard... Like, it's one of the videos I've put the most amount of effort into, even just getting all the footage, which is like 400 gigabytes worth of footage, took me about a week to do. And now... Uh, I'm in, and then I had to record like my whole all my audio for my script, and I'm now in the process of doing editing, and I'm finally actually getting to show off a bit more of my editing skills. Haven't done that since the Lethal Company video, so I'm really, really looking forward to it. Uh, I, it's, I've already got some really funny bits in that video that I think people are really going to enjoy. 
But yeah, you know what? I think that is going to do it for me. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Survival is all that matters. to watching me. Fuck yes.
want to do it. It's hot in here. Fall by 